Hello students this is Dr Pravin Tripathi and with me is Jiyaji sir and in this short video we want to analyze the NEET PG 24 paper based on data and draw some inferences which can be used for our preparation of the upcoming exams so Jiyaji sir after the exam a lot of students are disappointed and there are multiple things floating around one of them is that PYQs and PYTs are no longer important so sir i want with you to analyze that and give a definitive answer that is that correct or not second thing that that i want to analyze with you is that are conceptual questions now important even for neat pg we always used to say that for inic they are very important and they are somewhat important for neat pg but can we now say with confidence that even for neat pg conceptual questions is the thing and sir third thing there is this feeling that this was a toughest exam ever and uh, whatever preparation that students have done does not matter at all now uh, is that correct so sir i'll go to the data on all these three points and then let's have a discussion on this so students this is the data so for almost 14 or 15 subjects i talk to the faculties and i ask them to you know fill this table i ask them every single teacher that how many questions from your subject were pyqs or pyts the second question was how many of them were conceptual or image based and finally how much of how many of them were tough as you can see it will not add to 100 because a pyq can also be conceptual or a pyt can also be conceptual so it would not add to 100 and that's perfectly fine and we also did the same for session 2 because it's quite apparent it's quite evident that there were significant differences between session 1 and session 2 now let's look at the number for some subjects like biochemistry almost 90% of questions were pyqs or pyt based even in session 1 or in session 1 but even in session 1 there were subjects like anesthesia or surgery where the number of pyqs were very less for most of the subjects however you can see very high numbers of pyqs pyts we are talking about session 1 let's talk about the conceptual and image based question now you see a trend here everything is around 50 to 60% in some subjects it's almost 90% but for majority of subject it is somewhere between 50 to 60% and the proportion of tough question is around 18% so here is the cumulative data teachers say that around 16% of the questions were pyqs or pyts i am talking about session 1 again almost 55% of the questions were concept based or image based and around 18% of questions were tough the picture changes slightly when we talk about the session 2 overall the number of pyqs are slightly lesser it is 63% and i must say that out of the 63% again the majority are pyts right the number of conceptual question is around the same the number of tougher questions is definitely more almost a quarter so govin sir my first question to you when you look at this data and when you look at your pharma questions my first question to you is are pyqs and pyts now irrelevant so this is very obvious answer so pyqs and pyts will never be irrelevant so there are two important things i want to stress number one i have been teaching since 20 years and i have seen papers much tougher than this also i have seen the papers which have even lesser pyts than this also Okay. Uh, there was one exam i think is in 2012 11 or 12 something the paper was extremely extremely tough even i do not know the many questions and most of the teachers were not aware about the questions so many questions were there but even that paper contained around 55% of the pyts mm. so more than 50% pyts have been asked in every exam till now right. since last 20 years uh, that is i am teaching so what jiyaji sir is saying that even in the tougher exam at least 50% you can assume you can assume that at least 50% would be pyts sir sometimes we have papers like neat pg 23 which was heavily pyq based so so what is what is the range sir as far as the pyqs and pyts are concerned so if we talk about pyts the range i expect is usually between 60 to 90% plus okay, so in easier exam when the pyts are more we say that exam is easier so that will range to 80 90% but even the toughest of the exams it will be nearly 60% now there are two important things number one uh, the pyqs suppose you say they are irrelevant 
and you do not do that so even if you are not uh, attempting those 60% questions correct which everyone is doing you are out of the competition so number one you cannot skip or underestimate the role of pyqs and pyts number two suppose you think that pyqs or pyts are not coming at all then what will you study so obviously you cannot complete each and everything the time is limited and the information is infinite so it is not possible to complete each and everything you have to base your preparation on something and that something is previous year topics only clear so obviously you need to be more conceptual you need to understand the concepts and then apply so that is the way forward obviously but pyqs and pyts will remain important eternally so sir uses the word eternally which is a very strong word but i totally agree with him the numbers will may vary but pyts and pyqs would always be important students so, this is something that anxiety does anxiety sometimes make us indulge in all or none thinking if 20% pyts are lesser this exam our brain is telling us that no pyts were asked that is not true the data tells us otherwise but sir this is definitely a trend an emerging trend in a paper like neat pg almost 60% of questions in the form of clinical scenarios and concept based questions that is definitely a change in the trend sir what what do you want to say on that so there are two things again so number one it may be the routine now but uh, i do not still agree because i have seen many times this like i give you the example of 2011 or 12 paper so this can happen one off session like this session it has been asked and the next session maybe it is totally like 2023 this can happen but the way forward is to know the clinical and the conceptual things definitely but even in this exam if you say we have 55% or even 60% conceptual question still there are 40% one liner or two or three liners which are ratification questions direct fact based questions so you cannot underestimate them also so the important thing is you cannot leave neither you can leave the concepts nor you can leave the pyt related factual information so both have their important things so you need to create a balance between the two but sir isn't it a good thing i mean if if the neat pg is also asking conceptual question it's great the students have to ratify less and the preparation for neat pg and nicet becomes even more in sync definitely that is that is the way forward because i i am not good fan of uh, indian paper setters mm. because uh, there is no point in remembering what is the most common mm. of this mm. so most commonly used drug is this so that is not a thing to be asked from the pg entrance students clear so rather you should judge their clinical knowledge because they are going to be a doctor and sitting in a practice later on doing pg so their clinical acumen should be good so if i have been a paper setter i will try to make 90% clinical questions yeah? but uh, obviously this is the thing and you have we have to prepare like that but very important thing is if you understand the concepts then rectifying the things also become easier so that is very nice i said that if your concepts are strong even retaining facts becomes easier and students this has been the trend our exams are moving slowly towards usmle pattern now they even brought the sections the the five section examination all of that usmle has been doing for 10 or 12 years so we can expect that the papers will become more conceptual many of our friends and you know colleagues who are working in different government hospitals they say that they are asked to prepare questions for the entrance examination and they are often told that give more of images give more of clinical scenarios so definitely even the testing agencies want to make it more clinical now so this is taken care of third is the number of tough questions sir after the exam when i was talking to the students uh, i had that this feeling that the session 2 was multiple times tougher than the session 1 but the data that we are seeing on the screen is not saying the same thing it is definitely tougher but by around 8% so exams toughness level or difficulty level was definitely different but by a certain extent so sir what impact would this data have on the whole process of normalization and do you think that the students who appeared in session 2 would get substantially lower marks than the session 1 students uh so that need to be seen obviously yeah. exact thing but what i expect is number one you said that uh, there is hardly 8% difference mm-hmm. but according to me 8% is a huge difference right. so 8% difference uh, that means out of uh, uh, 200 questions it will be around 16 17 questions mm-hmm. so if continuously i get 10 questions wrong mm-hmm. so obviously i will my other question will also start getting wrong right. because i think pata nahi kahan se paper aa gaya pura hi right. yeah? so we cannot underestimate that the second paper was definitely difficult mm-hmm. but what is important it is difficult for everyone yeah? so if 1 lakh students have appeared so everyone is getting the same paper 
Yeah. Now that's why the concept of normalization has come. Mm. So I have made a separate video for normalization. So my expectation is that if the paper is tougher, then it will not harm the students of session two. Right. So normalization will take care of that, that both the type of students who have got easy questions and who have got tough questions, they stand at same level, depending upon their knowledge and how much uh, they could have attempted if the paper was easy. And uh, one more thing you have asked me uh, regarding this, that uh, whether the paper is tough and uh, how to go about further. Mm -hmm. yeah? So the papers are definitely becoming tougher, but you cannot do that. Papers are very tough and papers are all conceptual and all uh, information is uh, image based. So you leave the fact based questions, you leave the previous year questions. So you cannot do that. Number one, I will reiterate again, maybe the next paper is just like the previous papers. Mm -hmm. You never know. And suppose the paper is like this only, even then 40% questions are memory based. Yeah? So my important advice will be to keep wearing sim in similar ground, but be more concept oriented. So sir made a very important point that we just cannot change the entire basis of our preparation on the basis of one paper or one session. 23 after the exam, we were like, do only PYQs. And now we are like, do only conceptual questions. No. We have to strike a balance. We do not know what kind of paper the NB is going to throw at us in 25. So, sir, after all these data, uh, the important thing is the inferences that we have already discussed. But I just want to put all of that together. So, first thing, PYQs, PYTs, are they no longer relevant? The answer is a big no. Right? Uh, you are saying that even in the worst papers, 40, 50 or 60 percent of questions would come from PYQs, PYTs. So, they continue to form the base of your preparation. On conceptual learning, sir, we are agreeing that conceptual learning is we have to increase on this. We have to increase it. It's, it's definitely becoming more and more important. And it's not a bad thing. You have to prepare for INICT. INICT questions are always conceptual. So probably now you don't have to prepare in two different ways. It's it's actually a good thing. We focus more on concepts. Clinical MCQs again, along with conceptual clinical MCQs are coming, and uh, that also tells us that we have to be very practical in the way we pace our exam because these are sometimes longer questions. And this also tells us that we have to improve the art of solving MCQs. Sir, uh, when I appeared for USMLE, we, where we used to get long questions, often we would be told by the teachers or seniors that read the last line first, because then reading the entire questions then becomes easier. I think these practical things would become more and more important in our Indian exams also. And again, GTs are important because they tell us how to appear for the exam.